Welcome into Bill Snyder Digital presented by Hunt Real Estate, the official real estate and relocation company of the Buffalo Bills and the Bills lose in a tough game, 42 to 16 to the Tennessee Titans who essentially had two weeks uh, without a game. Their last game they played was 16 days ago against the Vikings. They didn't play against the Steelers due to that COVID outbreak. They only had two practices within those 16 days, but they somehow found a way to win with a final score of 42 to 16. I'd like to welcome in Eric Wood to our broadcast. He's a Bills legend, former offensive lineman for the Buffalo Bills. And Eric, if I couldn't predict this one, honestly, I thought the Bills were going to come out, uh, punch him in the gut, go up a ton of points because, hey, the Tennessee Titans were the reason why this game got moved because they had a COVID outbreak. I thought the Bills were going to be fed up with the preparation that they had to do, the uncertainty uh, with this game, but the Titans come out and they're the ones who punch the Bills in the gut. So how did this all fall apart? Where did this really begin, Eric? The Bills tonight made uncharacter uncharacteristic mistakes that we haven't seen from them the entire season. They made a ton of penalties, 10 penalties on the night. They had three turnovers. Uh, they gave up a long punt return. They had penalties on returns that set up their drives, uh, one in particular at the 10-yard line. They just did things tonight you have not seen from this team this season. And because of that, they go down to Tennessee and get smoked by a team that hadn't been in the facility but two days since September 25th. Uh, it kind of reminds me to a time back when we had the November game, when I was on the team, we played against the Jets on Monday Night Football, and we didn't get a whole lot of prep time at all. We got one practice in Detroit to prepare for the game, and we ended up beating the Jets. It, maybe it's something about unfortunate circumstances that make you rally around each other, and that's what the Titans may have benefited from tonight. Yeah, you can point to this loss uh, due to several different reasons. Had a lot of Bills defensive players out that are really important to this team, important being on the field. They were without them tonight. I think you could see that in a ton of different ways. Tennessee Titans head coach Mike Rabel is 4-0 coming off of games where they have 10 or more days of rest. Uh, one of the captains, one of the players that the Bills look up to a lot, Micah Hyde, uh, was in the locker room after the game. Let's hear what he had to say about this loss. Hey, Micah, John Scott. Um, how much did the alternative and changing of the week have an effect on, on how you guys played tonight? Um, I don't think one bit. I think that, uh, you know, we just, we came down here. Uh, we just didn't get it done. You know, uh, you know if anything, the, they gave us more time to, to, to heal up. Um, and we just, like I said, came down here, didn't get it done. Just didn't play our type of our type of football. And, uh, you know, that's why you saw the result that you saw. At any point over these, these last few days, were you guys also having to prepare for the Chiefs just in case this game didn't take place tonight? Oh, no, no, no. We, we were 100% uh, focused on the Titans. We knew this, uh, this game was going to be played you know, one way or another. Um, yeah, we was not looking forward to the, to the Chiefs or anything. We... To be honest, we didn't we didn't say one thing about the Chiefs, um, so it was strictly Titans, and, and we just like I said didn't get done. Thanks, Micah. Yep. Hey, Micah, Matt Bovey here. Was there a point when this game felt like it got out of hand, or where maybe you guys, you know, came, maybe you lost grasp of something? A hundred percent. I mean, if you, if you saw the score. You could tell it kind of got out of hand. Um, you know, there's a few plays that we wish we could have back. Uh, you know, once once the the bleeding started, we uh, we couldn't stop it. Um, and uh, you know, I think that the result of this, you know, we're not going to go undefeated. That's that's the uh, the one outcome of this. And you know, hopefully, short week. Good thing it's a short week, so we can uh, you know flush it and and move on to the next. And Micah, you've you know been with the team now through the ups and downs of the last couple of years, and I know we've talked to you around your locker so many times about like the, you know, the record isn't necessarily indicative of what's going on. You are still four and one. It is still just one game. How do you keep it as just one game and put it on the back burner? All right, we've got a lot of veterans in this locker room that, that understand that um, that better on the block and know, you know, especially with the short week that that you got to you know flush it and move on and, and understand that you can't let it dwell going into next week. Um, so, you know, I, I don't, I don't think anybody was after the game panicking or anything like that. It's just, you know, it is what it is. We took an L, we got hit on the chin. Um, 
you know, we got to come out next week and, and uh, get back to it. Thanks, Micah. Appreciate your time. Of course. Yeah, of course. Hi, Micah. Matt Fairburn here. Um, what did you make of the way the Titans came out in this game? Um, you know, having one practice, uh, they, they seemed really charged up uh, from the jump in this one. Well, I think that even early in the week uh, or, you know, throughout the week, yeah, I was kind of joking with you guys and saying they might, you know, they're going to have fresh legs because they haven't played, you know, come off a bye. And, and all they've been hearing about is, is you know, all the teams around the league talking, talking junk, uh, a lot of media talking junk about um, how they can't, you know, keep keep the uh, situation with COVID and all that stuff in-house and it's getting out, uh, you know. So they've been hearing a lot of a lot of stuff about that. And, um, you know, I can tell you, tell you if that was happening to us, you know, the Buffalo Bills football team and, and everybody was coming at us saying how, um, you know, we could have did better with this whole COVID situation by week, you know, coming in this game, not really knowing if you're playing or not. Um, I'm going to be fired up too, um, but that's no excuse for us. We got to, we got to come down here prepared, uh, prepare better and, and, uh, you know, give out a better effort. What was this weekend like for you guys waiting to hear what was going to happen? I know you got to practice in on Sunday. Just what was, um, you know, the weekend like, uh, you know, waiting to, to hear what this game would be. Uh, the situation I've never been in in my life, to be honest. Uh, you don't really, you know, not knowing who and when you're playing, you know, that's that's rare. It's rare to happen. Um, but like I said, it's not an excuse. Um, as soon as they, you know, said, uh, you know, yesterday when we traveled down here, they said, you know, no no positive test, game on. Uh, you know, we hopped on the flight, came down here, and it was on us to be ready to play. We just didn't do that. We didn't we didn't come out with our uh, our best effort, and you know, that's why the uh, the score got away from from us and, and you see the result of what it was. Thank you, Micah. Thank you. Hey, hey Micah, Jay with the Buffalo News here. Sean is, uh, you know, he preaches about pre-snap penalties and they're a killer. Uh, both sides of the ball, it seemed like you guys had those jumping offside or false start. What do you attribute that to? Uh, you know, not being focused. Uh, we can't beat ourselves. There was, there was a few... Um, Third and longs, we jumped off sides. There was another third and 20, and we just, you know, um, just back communicate. You know, once again, the third down, you know, killed us this game. And um, we can't beat ourselves. We can't play against the opponent and play against ourselves. It's not, it's not going to happen. You know, you don't win in the league um, that way. You know, I've been on some good teams, and you learn from that. I've been on some bad teams, and you don't learn from that. Um, so, you know, um, I think this team's different. we got a lot of vets in this, in this locker room. And even after the game, you know, everybody was – positive everybody was you know keeping their head up and and understood that that's just one loss you know we're not going to go undefeated now okay cool but uh move on to next week and we got another you know another big opponent that we can't you know that they're coming off a loss so um can't dwell on it and can't let it beat us next week yeah yeah i know this is fresh Micah Hyde saying there, we cannot beat ourselves. And I think this was a classic case of this team beating themselves. I mean, with the penalties that we've already talked about, you already touched on, Eric, and the turnovers and the field position, it's hard to put yourself in a good position to even try and win a game or try and be competitive. Uh, when you do things like that, it's – you're kind of throwing the game away right there. If you had to point to one of those being uh, – the biggest killer for this team tonight, what would it be? Would it be the turnovers, the field position? What do you think? Yeah, I think when you look at the biggest killer, it was the turnovers because mm -hmm. Tennessee scored 21 points off those turnovers. That's essentially the game when you look at it. Uh, there was also a long punt return that led to seven points as well. So we could pick on the defense. We could look at the scoreboard and say, hey, the Tennessee Titans put up 42 points and we could we could really be upset with the defense's performance but you talk about uh all the short uh field drives that they had throughout the game that is so tough to overcome the bills actually out gained the titans in yards throughout this game the bills were 13 of 17 um on offense on third downs i mean they win the time of possession there was a lot of positives when you look at the stat sheet but when you're playing in the National Football League, if you lose the turnover battle three to zero, you have virtually no chance of winning the game. And that's uh, basically what we heard from Micah Hyde there. And he said a lot of it was focus. And we saw it uh, from the opening pass that Josh Allen threw to Andre Roberts. That ball tipped up in the air, short field, interception, touchdown, Titans. The focus wasn't there from the start. 
Yeah, the Titans are going into this game tied for a second, plus five turnovers. So, yeah, they were definitely going to score points off of those interceptions, off of those given up turnovers. But let's hear from QB1, Josh Allen, uh, what he has to say about tonight's game. How would you explain just a night that it looked like your team, uh, everybody, uh, looked unprepared to play and the team that supposedly had, I don't know what, one practice or whatever it was, was much more ready. How, how have you wrapped your mind around that? Um, I mean, I think it comes out and uh, we got punched in the mouth early on and um, I can't do that to our defense, put them in vulnerable situations and allow their offense to have short fields. Um, you know, I did it twice tonight and, um, you know, I take that heavily upon myself. So we got to come out. We got to, we got to be, you know, faster, um, faster starters in the game and understand that uh, we can't do that, you know, throwing that interception there. And um, even the one down in the second half, uh, you know, I got a little greedy uh, on that one and made bad decision, bad ball. Um, and I didn't feel like I got fooled too many times tonight, but um, it is what it is. You know, we're, we're not going to let this one off with find us. We understand, you know, not in, you can't win them all. So, uh, but again, it, we got to be better disciplined, um, you know, turnovers, um, decision-making on my part, penalties, costly penalties, um, drops early on. We, we got to be better. And, um, you know, it starts, starts with me. So, um, again, we'll, we'll learn from this one. We're not going to make it a bigger deal than what it needs to be. Uh, we, we got a short week ahead of us and we got to learn from this one and, and kind of forget about it as quickly as we can. Quick follow. Did, did the fact that this game, the uncertainty of when you'd play and all that stuff in any way, did you feel that factored into uh, making this a, a less than perfect preparation for a game for you guys? No, we, we can't, we can't use that as an excuse. We can't do that to, uh, to our, as a team. I mean, we, we our mindset all week was we're going to play um, and we'll adjust to anything else. Obviously it's a different situation that, uh, you know, it, it sucked to be in quite frankly, but uh, we got to be better. We got to be prepared and we got to come out swinging early. Thanks, Josh. Hey, Josh, um, this was this looked like the first time in the five games you've played that you just didn't seem to have the answers tonight. In the first four games, it just looked like you always knew where you were going. You always knew what the answer was going to be. And I'm just wondering why it didn't look the same tonight. Did their defense, what were they doing that was giving you so much trouble maybe? Oh, uh, I mean, well, you know, putting us behind the sticks early on, um, you know, I got I got to be better on that first drive. Obviously, uh, putting that ball out in front of Dre and letting, letting him make an easier catch. Um, you know, the one bad decision, bad ball interception in the second half. I got to be better on that. But I don't feel like they fooled me too many times, to be honest. Um, you know, they credit to them. They came out ready to play, and um, they made more plays than we did. And uh, you know, I, I, again, this is a a game we got beat. You know, in all three phases: offense, defense, and special teams. And we understand that. Um, but again, on a short week, we're not going to let one, one loss define us. We got to get ready for the fitting Super Bowl champs at home next week. And a quick follow, just not having John Brown, how much of an impact did that have tonight? Um, I mean, we would love smoke. Obviously we wish we had him out in the field. Um, you know, we got to have guys step up and I think for the most part we did, but, uh, we got to be better prepared, you know, if a situation like that happens. So, um, it's a learning experience. Uh, we'll, like I said, we'll learn from it. Thanks. Hey, Josh, um, just uh, with respect to the passing game and trying to take what the defense was giving you, how much was that complicated by being behind on the scoreboard? Because I know you got Cole involved in the second half there big time, but you were trying to kind of nickel and dime your way down the field and down down by the points you were, it kind of made it tough because the time started working against you. How did you try to manage that while still trying to climb back into the game? Yeah, I mean, the interception in the third quarter really hurt our chances. And, um, again, it's a defense that they're allowing you to, to take everything underneath. Um, and I got greedy and made a bad decision, threw a bad ball, and really cost our team. They had a short field, and, you know, we had three turnovers tonight. They scored 21 points off it, and that's a huge difference in a game um, when we turn the ball over three times and, uh, you know, they don't turn it over at all. And, they, you know, they scored all three times on them. So uh, they took advantage of their opportunities. But, you know, I think – if I take what's given there, if I even throw it over his head, um, you know, at that, that point in the game, you know, it's a completely different situation. Um, it, you know, it gives our defense a better chance to, to get a stop, um, you know. But, again, it's, it's a learning experience. Um, quite frankly, you know, you're going to have games like this. We understand that 
adversity is going to hit, we got to we got to be able to bounce back this next week. And then just real quick, uh, just the effort that Stefan gave you today from start to finish, he seemed like he was a constant for you on offense. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what he is. And he's a he's a dog and um, being down one extra guy, we knew that, you know, he was going to have a heavy work workload for us. And, um, you know, being gassed and tired and, you know, wasn't an option for him. And, um, you know, he, he made as many plays as he could. Thanks. Hey, Josh, John Scott, uh, you guys haven't been in the position of trailing, especially by a, a significant margin at this to this point this season. What was the feel like? How, how do you feel you guys responded to being in a position so unfamiliar to this point this season? You no, know, we tried to stay calm on the sidelines. And, um, you know, again, that third quarter, I, I forced forced a ball I shouldn't have. Um but, uh, you know, I, the feeling on the side then wasn't panic, you know, and that's that's the sign of a good team. And um, we weren't trying to, you know, for the majority part of the game, we weren't trying to do too much. We were just trying to trying to put together some drives. And obviously we didn't – I don't think we had too many drives today. And, um, you know, ending two in turnovers and, um, you know, putting a couple, you know, it's, that's not good enough. And we understand that. And um, we got to find ways to correct them and, and get ready for a short week on Monday. Thanks, Josh. Hey, Josh, it's Kim Jones. Can you hear me okay? Yep, I got you. Good. I have two if I can squeeze two in here. Uh, number one, did this just seem uncharacteristic of your team? It, it, it's not the way you've played in 2020, obviously. It just seemed uncharacteristic from the get-go almost. And my second would be, toward the end, it looked like you went down the the, the bench and, and kind of shook hands a little bit, and then maybe we're talking to Trey Edmonds. I'm just wondering, as that game's winding down, what those convos are like. Um, I mean, again, getting to a faster start to answer your first question, it's, you know, it, we were punched in the mouth tonight and we didn't respond how we should have, um, you know, but I, I do appreciate the guys. We've, we've thrown interception. Um, the next drive we go and we score a touchdown and, and do what we're supposed to do. But, um, you know, we got to continue to build on drives like that. And, um, you know, it just, it, it takes a better effort, you know, uh, in all three phases. And um, again, I, I, I take it upon myself to, to be the leader and, um, you know, I didn't play good enough for our team to win tonight, and I understand that, and, you know, I got to fix it. And two, just talking to Trey, and then, you know, I won't say um, exactly what I said, but uh, making sure that we have a good practice this week and we stay stay focused and stay prepared on the task at hand. And, again, um, it, losing one game, like we said, is not going to define who we are. You know, winning one game is not going to define who we are. We're 4-1. Um, we got the defending Super Bowl champs coming into our house next week, and we got to defend our dirt and, and find a way to – put our best forward and uh, put our best foot forward and try to find a win. Thank you, Josh. Thanks, Josh. That's it. Presented by Energy Mark, the official energy supplier to the Buffalo Bills. Coming into this game, Josh Allen was averaging 70.9% completion rate. Today he had 63.4%. In the first half it was under 50%. He threw two interceptions. So as we continue on with the trend of uncharacteristic efforts by this team, Josh Allen uh, showed something that he hasn't shown this season. I mean, I can't remember the last time Josh Allen threw two interceptions, and he looked like he was forcing throws to receivers. It looked like he was getting pressure and being affected by that pressure. And he said a lot of times, and many of his teammates have said, you know, he's throwing receivers open this season. And I didn't see that tonight from him. Where did he struggle? Yeah, he made some riskier throws tonight than he made in previous games. We'll have to break down the film and figure out exactly why some of those happened. There's a lot of speculation on social media from responses that I got that maybe he was trying to force the ball to Stephon Diggs with John Brown out, especially in the first half. In the second half, you saw him utilize right from the jump, utilize Cole Beasley a lot more. Um, the first interception of the game, maybe a touch behind Andre Roberts, but that's not his fault. There was also, I think, maybe three or four other drops in the first half. So when you look at under 50% in the first half, a big number of those incompletions were drops. Um, and, you know, um, I think it also hurt the passing game today, especially in the first half. Devin Singletary only runs for uh, – he ran for less than two yards a carry against the worst run defense in the league in yards per carry. So if you can get the run game going, then you take the Titans' safeties away from their kind of shell defense they were running for most of the day that didn't allow any of the deep balls that we're, we've become so accustomed to seeing from this Bills offense. 
Yeah, uh, Devin Singletary, 11 attempts, 25 rushing yards. You thought that they would maybe start with the run first and let the pass open up through the run today just because the Titans rank so low in uh, allowing rushing yards per game. But I know it's a little bit tough, but we're just going to relive some of these highlights, see how we got to this final score, 42-16. to 16. So let's take a look at how it happened. Ryan Tannehill here with a 16-yard touchdown pass to A.J. Brown. That would be the first score of the game, 7-0 Titans lead. Allen here with the pitch over to Isaiah McKenzie, who rushes in for the three-yard touchdown, 7-7 seven to seven tie game. And Derek Henry here runs it in for a one-yard touchdown, 14-7 to seven Titans. Then Tannehill here trying to be like Derek Henry. He'll keep it himself for a 10-yard score, and the Titans go up 21-10 to 10 at this point. And it's more Titans touchdowns. This one to tight end Johnny Smith, a four-yard touchdown, 28 to 10. The Bills trying to get back in it here. Allen with a 22-yard reception all day to throw over to TJ Yeldon for a touchdown. They tried the two-point conversion. It was no good. 28 to 16 was the score at this point. And then Derrick Henry again rushes it in for his second rushing touchdown of the day. 35 to 16 would be the score at that point. And the Bills would lose 42 to 16. There you're seeing the box score. Allen completing 63.4% of his passes. TJ Yeldon, 52 rushing yards. Stephon Diggs, another 100 receiving yard game for him. And Tremaine Edmonds leading uh, the defense with eight tackles, one pass defense. So let's send it over to Coach McDermott, who is on Zoom with his thoughts after the game. Just wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, penalties, field position, um, and turnovers. I mean, did that pretty much spell it out for you in this one? Yeah. Um, you know, doing things that you can't do and expect to win a football game. Uh, that's what it boils down to. Um, Pre-snap penalties in particular, um, turning the ball over, and, um, and you know, at the end of the day, uh, not a high enough level of execution. So I'll give credit where credit's due. You know, they were ready to go, and, and uh, you know, we beat ourselves probably more than anything, and, and that's something we can't do in this league. Hey, uh, Sean, how, how surprised were you that it, it just appeared your team was uh, so unready to play? And that that's just doesn't isn't characteristic of a Sean McDermott team. So it, 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 have you have you been able to reconcile that? And if so, what what do you what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, we, uh, we've got to be ready to go. And, and uh, you know, again, I uncharacteristic game for us, uh, uncharacteristically poor fundamentals, uh, poor pre-snap discipline, turn the ball over. Uh, Vic, you've been around this game a long time. You can't do that. You can't, there's only one opponent, that opponent's on the other sideline. You can't beat yourself. And, and again, I give, give them credit. Um, they were ready to go. And, and uh, at the same time that we beat ourselves. And and as a quick follow-up, he, he wasn't the only one, but Josh Allen, uh, having a game very unlike any that he had played in the last four. So w what was your sense of, of his performance in, in that it looked like he was forcing throws? It, it looked like he was doing a lot of things, again, that we weren't seeing uh, for the first four games. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's some throws, obviously, he'd like to add back. I thought he was patient, and then at times we, we may have uh, pushed the ball in the covers there. And, you know, the first, the first turnover – uh, right away changed the game and, and uh, it was a drop pass there and you can't do that. Uh, tips and overthrows over the middle of the defense usually uh, get, it, get intercepted and it did. And, and so, um, you know, again, a lot, a lot we can improve on from this game and, and uh, we've got to get, we've got to learn from this tape and each and every one of us starting with me and uh, the, fun, the lack of fundamentals, the lack of execution, Pre-snap penalties, again taking the, taking care of the football. Uh, hard to win in this league unless you unless you do those things. Thank you, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean. John Scott. Uh, certainly, this was quite the unusual week, filled and headlined by uncertainty. How much did that play a factor into tonight's performance? Yeah, we're not going to get. We're not about uh, 
Uh, we're not about excuses and explanations at this point, John. You know that. You know how we do things here. And, uh, we get we get paid and, and uh, expect to be ready to go. And and uh, obviously we weren't ready to go. And so um, we've got to learn from this experience and uh, and grow from it. We've got a good football team and the Chiefs coming into Buffalo. Uh, who will have an extra day's rest on their hands. And, and so we we'll, we've got to obviously do some things differently this week and. And uh, it starts with look, looking at the film, getting that necessary feedback so we can see where everything went wrong. Appreciate it, Sean. Thank you. Hi, Sean. Uh, Adam Benini, I, I know you um, have concern everywhere, uh, but specifically to your defense and kind of some of the trends we're seeing, can you diagnose that and, and maybe what carried into this game tonight and, and what you think needs to be fixed there? Well, I'll be anxious to look at the film on the way home, Adam, honestly, and uh, I think I know what I'm going to see, and it starts with, uh, as we talk about all the time, being 111, doing your job, being where you're supposed to be, taking away, if, if it's coverage, taking away the levers the defense is meant to take away, and uh, without trying to do too much. So it's, it's a fine line there to balance, and uh, uh, there's always things we can do differently uh, call-wise, and so we'll evaluate that as well. But overall, um, you know, We've got, to, we've got to do a better job on defense on third downs, get them into more third downs, affect the quarterback. I didn't think our four-man rush was good enough tonight. You've got to be able to affect the quarterback with four. And uh, we got the drive before half, the quarterback, I think it was that one when the quarterback scored, um, you know, using his legs there. So just just uh, uncharacteristic of, of our defense to this point in terms of uh, the start of our season. Um, poor field position. And then we get the penalty, we get the takeaway, we turned it over, we get three and out, and we had the penalty on the uh, on the rough end of the passer. So it uh, wasn't our night, but again, we've got to be uh, up, you know, honest with ourselves and say why and make sure we can get this thing fixed here. Thank you. Safe trip back. Sure. Coach Mookie Hawkins, Waffle Sports 1080. Good evening. Yeah, I mean, you know, anything that possibly could went wrong obviously went wrong. I mean, and the Titans, you know, rightfully so capitalized off the mistakes that was made and, you know, not establishing that field position early in the game, keeping you guys pent and, you know, things of that nature. I kind of felt that, you know, it was really emotion versus consistently consistency. And, um, you know, Tennessee was riding on a lot of emotion tonight and that kind of outweighed things. Just what's what's to be learned from all of this, Coach? Well, we got to look at ourselves first, Mookie, as I said earlier. Um, you know, the answer to the question why and why is because when you don't take care of the ball, um, when you don't take the ball away, when you have pre snap penalties, a lack of discipline, things we talk about all the time. That's why it's disappointing. Um, you, know, you know, when you look at our run game, they're playing cover two. We got to be able to run the football against cover two and get more than three yards. And then our defensive line on the defensive side has got to be able to affect the quarterback more. With our four man rush, so we'll just start there. And, and uh, I got to do a better job. And, uh, and so we'll look at the tape on the way home. I'll look at the tape on the way home, and I think I already know what I'm going to see. Um, but we've got to make got to make those corrections and, and uh, get ready for a good Kansas City Chiefs football team coming to Buffalo. Yes, sir. You know, hey, you've been in this situation before, man. Just go ahead, lick your wounds, get back to the drawing board, get ready for this week's. That's right. That's right, man. Safe travels. Thanks. Hey, Sean. Uh, I'm just wondering, when did the injury to Tredavious White initially pop up, and how close was he to actually giving it a go tonight? Yeah, during the week, Joe, I, I forget exactly what day. You know, we had him on the injury report. He didn't practice. Uh, we were hoping, honestly, that he'd get back. Uh, we, at the end of the day, he couldn't make it. Um, so uh, sometime during the week there. Was um, are you hopeful that he'll be back next time around for the Chiefs game? Yeah, we'll see. You know, I'll leave it up to the docs and tell me what they see and, with, and how he's doing. And um, you know, we're obviously better with him than we are without him. Mm -hmm. uh, but certainly appreciate Cam Lewis stepping in and uh, you know, playing hard. Just to clarify, he did work out uh, in Tennessee with you guys today, right? Uh, I'm not sure if he worked out. I don't believe he worked out today. on the field. Okay. All right, thanks. Hi, Sean. Um, obviously a weird, weird week, um, probably unique um, for you as a coach. I'm curious how you felt about the way the league handled 
the situation over the weekend and, and kind of shuffling things around? Yeah, I've got no comment on that. I respect your question, Matt. I just, uh, I got no comment. We got, there's no excuses, no explanations. Uh, you know, we got beat tonight and, and that starts with, that starts with us. As a coach, how did you kind of adjust and handle those extra days? What did you guys do um, over that time to kind of adjust your schedule? And like I said, something you haven't done, had to do before. Yeah, we tried to give the players when we found out, when we found out Thursday night around six o'clock around dinner time. We tried to give the guys the next day off, the players, just to um, keep them fresh, you know, so you don't get too stale. And, um, just trying to find that balance of rest and, and work, right? And, and then we went and had a couple uh, days after that where we tried to get him back into a routine and, and, uh, and get him ready to go. Thanks, Sean. Yes, uh, uh, Coach uh, Coach McDermott, George Radney, Challenger Community News. It, it seemed like once the uh, once Derrick Hen Henry manhandled Josh Norman on that running play, the defense seemed to get that juice and started playing with more passion and more more aggressiveness. Is, is there seems to be something with these stadiums being empty that not only the Bills defense, but it seems around the league that the the defenses seem to be having trouble uh, stopping the offensive teams this season. Yeah, I think the numbers would support that overall. Uh, I'm not going to use that as an excuse for our defense. Uh, you know, we play better defense than, than we've had over the years uh, than we have this year. Um, so it's probably one of the factors, one of the variables uh, among among others. But uh, that's no excuse for the way our defense has played at times this, year, this season. Uh, I expect more. I know they expect more from themselves. Yeah, because it seems like they, with the different play. But did uh, Tennessee show them anything different? You think that they weren't ready for? No, no, no they, they didn't show anything different. Um, they did what we thought they were going to do, what we what we practiced and prepared for. We got to do a better job um, executing the defense and taking away what the defense is meant to take away. We got to get more pressure with our front four. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Sean. Uh, obviously, you've been around the league for a long time um, from your experience being on this side of a blowout like this, what can it do for a contending team moving forward? You know, you know what's the commonality on how good teams respond to games like this? Yeah. You know, so there is adversity every year, whether you lose by one or you lose by whatever we lost by tonight, it's there's adversity every year and uh, you know, you can learn from it and, and, and use it to, to build, Build, continue to build your football team. Uh, that's what that's what we plan on doing. I'm going to watch this tape on the plane home. Uh, I wish it was a six-hour plane ride so I could watch all three phases. To be honest with you, uh, on the plane ride home. But uh, we got to learn from this film, and uh, it starts by everyone looking themselves in the mirror, and, and that starts with me making sure uh, next time we're ready to go. All right. Thank you, Sean. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. That's it for tonight. Okay. Thanks, guys. Sean McDermott's press conference is presented by Hunt, the official real estate and relocation company of the Buffalo Bills. Coach McDermott saying he wishes the plane ride was six hours so he can watch all of the film. And you got to believe that he's not going to be sleeping too much tonight as they play the Chiefs on Monday night. But one thing that he said that stood out to me was we've got to get more pressure with our front four. And I think last year what we saw when the Bills scored 16 points or they averaged 19.6 points per game last season, one thing we always saw was the defense would step up and hold the opposing team to a few points. This year the defense has a lot of new faces. And I think they're really still trying to figure out their identity, figure out their defensive line, their front four. And on top of that, we saw a lot of guys who weren't playing today. Matt Milano, Tredavious White, Levi Wallace. And I think that really hurt the defense. So how does this defense move forward when possibly next week we could be without some of those players again? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head where you started in the 
front four has got to get a better pass rush. And Sean McDermott said it right there. If the front four is generating pass rush, that covers up for a lot that's going on in the secondary. Um, that, that could cover up for linebackers being missing. One guy can make a play up front in a, on a run play and cover up for everybody else. And I think you need to see more production from them. They brought in uh, Butler and Jefferson, high price free agents. They draft A.J. Epineza with their first draft pick this year in the second round. Ed Oliver, a top 10 pick last year. Jerry Hughes has been a very productive player throughout his career. Trent Murray has uh, Trent Murphy has flashed at times with the Bills. Those guys need to step up while Tremaine Edmonds is still getting fully healthy from his shoulder, it seems, while Matt Milano is on the mend, while Levi Wallace, Trey White are out. I think your defensive line can solve a lot of issues for you moving forward defensively. Yeah, this week of practice will definitely be important as they welcome the Super Bowl champs into Bills Stadium on Monday. It's a 5 o'clock Eastern time kick, so kind of like prime time a little bit. Uh, so it'll be a unique game coming up. Both teams are coming off of losses. The Chiefs lost to the Raiders this past weekend, so we'll see how the two face up against each other. If you want more highlights, more breakdown of this game, more analysis, more post-game sound, make sure you turn on MSG at 1130 tonight. Eric Wood and I will be there uh, breaking down everything you need to know from this game and what they need to do looking forward.